I forgot to lower, raise the camera level when I'm already have this in my hands. So I'll just go ahead and do it. <laughs> Here's the thing. It's a uh, free chunkers. I'm gonna see. It's really awkward without being able to hold the rest of the staff section. But here we go. Oh shit, bro! Check that shit out. Hey guys, welcome to the studio. Uh, I might as well call this channel Rhodes Island Engineering at this point, considering how many AK props I've made in a row. But that aside. This particular prop, uh, Spectre the Unchained's weapon, is probably my most complex 3D model and 3D print that I've made thus far. The uh, moving components aren't all that difficult, it's just a spinning part, so pretty much just making use of a DC motor. But uh, as far as like modeling all of the really complex and detailed components, uh, this took maybe like 16 to 20 hours total of just 3D modeling. And granted, like a third of that is just me backtracking and fixing mistakes. But either way, uh, this took quite a while. Uh, definitely, I would categorize it as an insane build. But those are just background details. So we'll just go ahead and jump right into it. And here is the entire 3D model. Now I did try to make this 3D model as accurate as possible to the game art um, that's on Game Press and whatnot. That being said, I did have to make some modifications to make actually 3D printing it a little bit more practical as well as the assembly process. Uh, for example, all of these staff sections, if I turn them invisible, they have these connecting pieces. And whenever you're 3D modeling something as long and as oddly shaped as this, especially where there is a, a big heavy piece on one end, you're going to have to conceptualize and think about where the hands are going to go, where you're going to hold it, what parts are going to be the stress points. And so for this uh, 3D model, you can imagine this piece right here being where you're mostly going to hold it and therefore the stress point is essentially going to be here between these two pieces um, maybe a little bit here but uh, mostly in these two pieces right here uh, where you're just going to be holding it one hand could hold the upper area to support it and then you're just going to at that point if you're walking around at a convention you're going to be watching the bottom parts all these delicate pieces here just so then you don't run into things and then snap it or break anything not too much else to show off with the 3d model there's always all the little details i can point out but aside from that i'll go ahead and uh, show you guys some of the printing process and some of the assembly process and then maybe discuss like uh, possible challenges with 3d printing this or if you want to 3d model anything similar okay so now that i've thought about it for a little bit uh, any advice I could give as far as how to 3D model something similar to this, uh, I could probably just make it a full video where I can detail all my thought processes um, as far as 3D modeling goes as well as assembly goes. Because the 3D printing community, it's kind of divided between like, it's like a Venn diagram where you got the people who like to, you know, grab 3D models, whether free or otherwise, off the internet, 3D print them, th and then assemble them, uh, and then you got your 3D modelers. They, the majority of people who uh, 3D print, eventually, you know, dip their toes into 3D modeling as well. And I do believe that actually engaging in 3D printing and assembly of various props really does help with 3D modeling, uh, especially if you plan on 3D modeling props. Um, but that aside, any advice I would give, I'll definitely include it in a future video where I pretty much give a how-to on the subject matter. All right, that's enough prattling on. So certain uh, connections are a little specific. For example, down near the base of the staff section, I have these little notches on opposing sides so that the uh, little pieces like these that are pretty delicate uh, just printing them separately, they're like probably going to be the most likely part that's ever going to break if you just walk around with the prop. But either way, it can easily just rest on this notch so that you know the proper distance uh, of where to situate it. And then the bottom section just has this notch in it that just 
uh, slots into place of this uh, very bottom section here. That way you could just easily set it and then slot it in and it should be pretty snug, just like that. And then, you know, it'll, it'll hold itself there, but at this point you're just gonna add some super glue or any other adhesive. You can also like uh, use some, a, a 3D print pen and then just to weld it together. That way it'll be more secure. But that'll be t uh, towards the end once you done all your spray painting, painting this part separately so that it'll match the uh, proper colors. And then uh, at that point, you'll just glue everything up and then that's what you'll just need to know when you're assembling it yourself. So yeah, good thing to know. And of course, all that shit is <laughs> had to be planned out ahead of time during the modeling step. So yeah, helps the plan ahead. All right, this uh, giant pizza cutter is probably one of the more intense assemblies I've ever had to do. That being said, tolerances are fitting pretty well. Uh, we're just gonna get those separation lines from where I sliced all the chunks apart, but that's kind of unavoidable. But uh, yeah, so far so good. Just got a few more things I need to post-process on the uh, 3D printers and then just keep assembling. I will start uh, spray painting pretty soon though, like uh, how this part is mostly black except for the spikes being silver or white. I'll leave it up to the client to hand paint this silver. But the majority of this uh, saw blade looking thingy-majig is silver-ish, so I'll kind of just spray paint that and then let them do touch up. But yeah, not so bad. Now at this point, some of y'all are probably wondering, how the hell am I going to ship this gargantuan piece of shit through like UPS or whatnot? Um, without like leaving it unassembled. Well, that's true because I'm not going to fully assemble it and it's unfortunate because you know when it's fully assembled That's when it's best to show it off and unfortunately if I fully assemble it I'm just gonna need to like ha Have it packed in a giant crate or something, but uh, yeah for the sake of you guys and for the sake of uh, me I pretty much just made my own All right, so this project was right up my alley. I mean, it's a fairly large prop, lots of complex parts. Uh, it's legitimately dangerous. I mean, what's there not to like? If you guys like to see more projects like this, then go ahead and like and subscribe because I've got a lot more plans in the future to build all kinds of crazy shit. My goal for this channel is to eventually live off of this passion of mine. So uh, hopefully in the future, if I ever get a sponsorship, <clears throat> yo star, please, then uh, I would like to just keep on working and uh, making more cool shit. Once again, uh, if you guys like the work that I do, go ahead and follow me on whatever's. And uh, yeah, see ya. Okay, this is actually take two because I ran out of battery. Uh, this thing weighs like 18 pounds and um, it's like an actually first legitimate test so just really trying not to stress out any of the parts. Okay. It's uh, able to stand on its own somewhat. I don't want to lean it or anything because I ain't about to just break what I spent several weeks making. Uh, it's fairly well balanced as far as holding it straight up. You just have to like really pay attention to where the bottom is because if you drag it and it catches on the floor, uh, the sheer length of it is just gonna make a snap. All right, here it goes. Oh. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool.
That's enough of that. <laughs> and to never turn it on ever again. <laughs> because at this point, it's kind of just a display piece. Holy fuck. This thing is so cumbersome. Dude, imagine carrying this shit throughout a convention. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I mean, I've carried more awkward shit, <laughs> so, like, to be fair. So, this isn't as bad. It's just so long. 